Now let's start with the more the longest part of this nerve, the mandibular branch, the mandibular division basically. You can write it division, that's better. So mandibular division, which is V3, so it is present at below the floor of the cavernous sinus. It is the largest division of trigeminal nerve. We also know that it is a mixed nerve. It has two components and the two components are sensory and motor components. In the motor component, we have eight muscles. Four of them, the total are eight muscles, and four of them are the muscles of mastication plus two muscles of floor of the mouth which were mylohyoid and the anterior belly of digastric muscle plus two tensors and they are tensor tympani and tensor villi palatine about the root Let's start from here. It starts from the middle cranial fossa through foramen or veil. It enters to infratemporal fossa. So here it is becoming a part, a content of the infratemporal fossa. So if a question comes, <clears throat> you'll know what to write. One point, you have it right here. So becoming <clears throat> a content of infratemporal fossa. Then the branches of mandibular division. Let's put a heading. So first there are branches from the main trunk. Those are two in number and they are meningeal branch and the other is the nerve to medial pterygoid. The meningeal uh, branch will enter into the middle cranial fossa uh, through foramen spinosum and it will supply <coughs> it will supply Dura matter. The nerve to medial pterygoid supplies three muscles. The first is the medial pterygoid muscle, the second is the tensor tympani muscle, and the third is tensor villi palatine muscle. Now the mandibular nerve, the second point is that now the mandibular nerve will divide into two divisions. The first is the anterior division while the other is called the posterior division. Branches from the anterior division. So we have four branches from the anterior division. The first branch goes to the deep temporal nerve. The first branch is the deep temporal nerve and it will supply temporalis muscle. And this branch is the muscular branch. So let's write it down over here. This is a muscular branch. The next is the mesenteric branch and it is also a muscular branch which is obvious from its name as well it will supply the masseter muscle the next is the also muscular branch and it is the nerve to pterygoid muscle the fourth and the last is the sensory branch and it is the buccal nerve let's talk about the posterior division now so the first branch is the auricular temporal nerve Auricular temporal nerve has further two branches. The first branch is the auricular branch and the second branch is the temporal branch. Auricular branch supplies tragus, tragus and upper part of pinna and the anterior half of the skin of external acoustic meatus. For your information, write over here that the posterior half of the posterior half external acoustic meatus is supplied by vagus nerve anyways so and it also supplies the anterior half of the tympanic membrane now the temporal branch skin overlying the temporal region and parotid gland the glossopharyngeal nerve fibers take lift from the temporal branch it's a very informal sentence. It's just for your. Uh, these are the fibers on the glossopharyngeal nerve. So that is why I'm calling it like that. So glossopharyngeal nerve fibers take lift from temporal nerve. 
so they are in the temporal nerve so just taking the lift anyways so now the other two branches the main branches from the posterior division are the lingual nerve which is the largest branch of posterior division and contains sensory fibers and then the inferior alveolar nerve is the last branch this is the same um, uh, web that we made before so but over here the predictor lingual nerve which is the largest branch of the posterior division and contains sensory fibers it also gives lift to parasympathetic fibers and those parasympathetic fibers are of the facial nerve from the superior salivatory nucleus Now the inferior alveolar, alveolar nerve will enter the mandibular foramen uh, but before entering the mandibular foramen it gives out a branch that is the nerve to mylohyoid muscle. This nerve to mylohyoid muscle supplies mylohyoid muscle and the anterior belly of digastric muscle. So we know that it entered the mandibular foramen and now it will go to the mandibular canal and there it will give branches to lower teeth and then it comes out of mental foramen as mental nerve important point so the ganglion attached with mandibular nerve with the mandibular division is otic ganglion it is in the infratemporal fossa and this is a parasympathetic ganglion now let's talk about the lingual nerve Let's talk about this lingual nerve a little bit more. So these ling this lingual nerve has three types of fibers. The first one are the general sensory fibers from the anterior two third of the tongue. The second are the special sensory fibers for taste from the anterior two third of the tongue. And the third are the parasympathetic fibers. So the parasympathetic fibers are starting from the superior salivatory nucleus, enter in the facial nerve, then they enter the uh, cauda tympani nerve, and then the lingual nerve, and then the lingual nerve goes to the submandibular ganglion. So we know the submandibular ganglion is attached with the lingual nerve. So when it comes to the sensory fibers, you can see that the lingual nerve will take sensations through cauda tympani and then through facial to facial nerve then the nucleus tactus solidarius and then the thalamus so this important point that the post ganglionic fibers from the submandibular the post ganglionic fibers which will enter the sublingual nerve from the, uh, so these fibers of the submandibular ganglion will supply the submandibular and the sublingual gland 